You can question why it is he knows anything about wine, and he actually knows nothing about wine <laughs> uh, in saint -Emilion. However, he, his family had uh, the Weingut des Grafen Sneiperg for... Your German is quite well. Danke. Danke. <laughs> for 800 years in the family. So there's some amount of history there. And uh, in addition, just to warn you, he is not only a count, but he's a count of the Holy Roman Order. So no Pope jokes tonight, okay? <laughs> A lot of people, they, they, they're speaking about technique, they go in the cellar. Um, for me, what is important is the terroir. If you have not outstanding soil, you can never make outstanding wine. So people, they buy a land somewhere, they make a very, very nice uh, cellar for millions and millions, but they never will have an outstanding complex wine. What means a terroir? A lot of people say, well, you have a terror, or you have not a terror. What means it? And also the owner, also the people they are really nourishing, they say, well, terror, definition. For me, outstanding terror is an area that in one moment in the time, it's in autumn, before the harvest, four weeks before the harvest, the wine stop to grow. It means there's a limit in the soil. It's not too rich. And if you look in the old world, the, there was the land for agriculture, and then we're going a little bit higher, and there's the wine. And it was always like that. The, that was, they, they stopped the, the, the growing season, and that is very important. But if you stop the growing up, see, growing up and the growing season, you push all the stock in the leaves and what is the stock in the shoots, and you bring it to the branches, to the grapes, to the fruits, to the skin, and to make it a ripeness. So, if you have an outstanding uh, terroir, that is the basic thing to be successful. But then, we have a, we have a very difficult guy we, in, the, in the 60s, in the whole world, the same guy, that's the half-educated, arrogant wine, wine engineer. <laughs> so this guy, what he's bringing us? He's bringing us chemical fertilizer, herbicide, insecticides, uh, products against botrytis. We don't need that. Look, look a little bit. If you look, go go down, and the very rich investors of wine, what they are buying? They're buying what? 28, 29? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, last century, yeah. <laughs> 61. Well, <laughs> and uh, then, then uh, 34, 37, 45. 47, 49, 50, 52, 53, 55, 59, 61, 64, and then more or less finished. And then in the 60s, the people start to making agriculture in the vineyards. They're pushing the wines with, uh, with, uh, with uh, chemical products. And the most, most stupid thing is that if you have chemical fertilizer, herbicide, seed, and insecticides, you will have no life more in the soil. Hmm. How you can make a wine with life if you have no life more in the soil? It's impossible. So, for me, the first thing was after the frustration in Montpellier, so I'm studying politics at first. Uh, nobody's perfect. Um, and, uh, and then I'm with my Sciences Po, I'm going to, to Montpellier, and the people looking to me, why is this guy he's doing here? The politic guys looking about agriculture, it will be a disaster. And uh, then I understand that this kind of um, education of agriculture or viticulture will be a disaster in the future. While my children cannot make the same job than me if we continue this way. So then we, we start to have our own compost. We have a large compost farm in Chateau de Guy, the first wine, red wine. And uh, we have no herbicide, seed, no insect seeds, all, all these things we don't need. It's, it's much more how you can, you can bring back life to your soil. That's very important. If you have no life in the soil, you will be never making out any wine. So this is the basic thing. Um, the second thing is, what is very <coughs> important is, is to have the, the history in your vineyards. A lot of people, they, they plant a new vineyard, Mr. John. 
If you Mr. John, there is a good, uh, good guy in the, in the vineyard, they plant one acre of wine. And they have one rootstock, I don't know what it's the name, but you have different names, you have hundreds of them, and they have one Cabernet Sauvignon, one clone. All of these are clones now. This is not funny. You go in, you will see very quick that it's, it's ripe, it's not ripe. What we are doing is that we have no clone in the rootstock, and we have no clone in Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon. We have our own selections from wines. They are 80, 90, 100 years old. Before, in the 60s, they start the, the, um, the cloning. So you, you have to know what the danger is that when, when Mr. John is planting a, a Merlot or a Cabernet Sauvignon, there, is, <coughs> there are two clones. They are 90% planting in the whole world. This is the danger. That means that 90% of the Merlot are exactly the same origins. They are perhaps not completely bad, but they are not complex. For me, what I want that I want to have different things in my vineyards. So we are completely coming back, we have our selection, we plant our selection in special areas, and we are completely independent to the nurseries. And the independence, that is what is great. That means freedom. That is what we challenge. So we have our own, own compost. We have our own um, nurseries. What we have not, that is the cork, and in the end of the day, the bottle. So, so we need bigger C or I don't know what. Um, so that I, I, that's, I give you a small picture, but for me, it's very the center to making outstanding wine. You, the, the, if you have this kind of soils that have a life, you will see that the wine's growing in a very <coughs> nice way. You don't have to spray too much. Why they are adapted to that and they have the resistance. It's like you are, have a lot of bacteria, but you are completely, you, you know that, and then your, 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 your body is prepared for that. But you need time. The big problem now in Bordeaux that they see a little bit what we do, we do for, for many years, and now they want to change very quick. But they change very quick, but they're coming from a completely um, chemical um, way to make wines to an <coughs> organic way. And then this is a big disaster, while the vineyards and the wines are not prepared for that. So they will, they will lose a lot of wines, they have the mildew, they have oidium, and uh, this is really not easy for them. The terroir is more important than the cepage. So we have in the, in, in, in the Bordeaux, the left bank is uh, stones and sand, that's Cabernet Sauvignon. The Cabernet Sauvignon needs to stress. And the marrow is in the right bank. Marrow means, right bank means clay, <coughs> limestone, and chalk. Chalk makes the wine high acidity and low pH. And then you have the freshness of the Merlot. But it's nothing to do with the over, overripe Californian um, Merlot. Here you have the freshness. And this is quite very, very important that you cannot see real the alcohol inside. So this is the first wine, um, Aigui. So this, this is a really a part of the history that you, you can always see the ruins of the chateau of the third cent 13th century. And uh, very man magnificent area. Then number two is the Clodoratoire. Clodoratoire is, for a lot of you, that will be your favorite. Mm -hmm. while, while, while you like, it's a very integrated, very round, very bright, um, so soft. Clodoratoire is always like that. It's 90% Mer Merlot, 10% Cabernet Franc, no Cabernet Sauvignon at all. So it's also very special, but it's a left in it's a it's a very um, cold area. So we need the Merlot. It's really that very well done. Then number third, it's Canagafilia. So it's my beginning. I, work, I start working here 34, 34 years um, ago, and Canagafilia is much more Cabernet Franc. Cabernet Franc is very different. You have much more spice, more flower, so you can find mint. Violet and wines, the tannins are much more powerful. So the 2008 Loratoire is so nice to drink now. I think Carlinga Filia 2008 
it will be much better to drink in 10 years when we are again here and uh, to have an, an, a new tasting with Eric. So thank you very much and I uh, hope you like the wines.